Good evening. Tonight, I will be reading the graphic novel version of The Last Unicorn by Peter S. Beagle. The comic book adaptation was done by Peter B. Gillis. There's an artist as well. Renee Deliz. The unicorn lived in a lilac wood, and she lived all alone. She was very old, though she did not know it, and she was no longer the careless color of sea foam, but rather the color of snow falling on a moonlit night. But her eyes were still clear and unwearied, and she still moved like a shadow on the sea. Unicorns are immortal, and it is in their nature to live alone in one place usually a forest, with a clear pool that will tell them that they are the most beautiful creatures in the world. And magic, too. They are a little vain, because all of that is true. She wandered all day among the great beech trees, keeping watch over the animals that lived in the ground and under bushes, in nests and caves earths and treetops. They hunted and loved and had children and died, and as the unicorn did none of these things, she never grew tired of watching them. I mislike the feel of this forest. Creatures that live in a unicorn wood learn a little magic of their own in time, mainly concerned with disappearing. We'll find no game here. Unicorns are long gone, if indeed they ever were. This is a forest like any other. Then why do the leaves never fall here, or the snow? I tell you, there is one unicorn left in the world. Not in the reign of three kings has there been even a whisper of a unicorn scene. Not in this country, or any other. You know no more about unicorns than I do, for I've read the same books and heard the same stories, and I've never seen one either. My great-grandmother saw a unicorn once. Oh, indeed. And did she capture it with the golden bridle? No, she didn't have one. You need only to be pure of heart. Did she ride her unicorn then, bareback under the trees? My great-grandmother was afraid of large animals. She didn't ride it, but she sat very still, and the unicorn put its head in her lap and fell asleep. My great-grandmother never moved till it woke. What did it look like? Pliny describes the unicorn as being very ferocious, similar in the rest of its body to a horse, with the head of a deer, the feet of an elephant, the tail of a bear, a deep bellowing voice, and a single black horn, two cubits in length. In the Chinese, she said only that the unicorn had a good smell. She loved the smell of the unicorn. She began to cry once, telling me about it. Of course, she was a very old woman then, and cried at anything that reminded her of her youth. Why did they go away, do you think, if there ever were such things? Who knows? Times change. Would you call this age a good one for unicorns? No, 
But I wonder if any man before us ever thought this time a good time for unicorns. Well, there's light enough to hunt elsewhere. Let's go. Stay where you are, poor beast. This is no world for you. Stay in your forest and keep your trees green and your friends long-lived. Pay no mind to young girls, for they never become anything more than silly old women. And good luck to you. I am the only unicorn there is. These words were the first words she had spoken, even to herself, in more than a hundred years. Her own voice frightened her and made her want to be running. That can't be, she thought. I would know if all the others were gone. I'd be gone too. Nothing can happen to them that does not happen to me. Oh, I could never leave this. I never could. Not if I really were the only unicorn in the world. I know how to live here. I know how everything smells and tastes and is. What could I ever search for in this world except this again? But suppose they are hiding together, somewhere far away. What if they are hiding and waiting for me? I will not go. Because men have seen no unicorns for a while does not mean they have all vanished. Even if it were true, I would not go. I live here. Then, one warm night. Yes, but now. I must go quickly and come back as soon as I can. Maybe I won't have to go very far. Under the moon, the road that ran from the edge of her forest gleamed like water. But when she stepped out onto it, she felt how hard it was. But whether I find the others or not, I will come back very soon, as soon as I can. How hard it was, and how long. She almost turned back then, but instead, she took a deep breath of the woods' air that still drifted to her and held it in her mouth like a flower as long as she could. Time had always passed her by in her forest, but now it was she who passed through time as she traveled. Oh, oh, you're beautiful. At the sound of the truth, she paused. The man knew who she was. Steady now, you pretty thing. I have been hunted with bells and banners in my time. Men knew that the only way to hunt me was to make the chase so wondrous that I would come near to see it. And even so, I was never once captured. I've never really understood what you dream of doing with me, once you've caught me. Ah, steady, steady, easy now. Pretty, pretty little mare. Curry you up, clean you off, take you to the fair. Mare? A horse? You were trying to capture a white mare. With her mane full of burrs? A horse! Hmm. The foot must have slipped. But how can it be? Now there's a horse. There's a real horse. That's an Arab horse. I was on a ship with an Arab horse once. I suppose I could understand it if men had simply forgotten unicorns, or if they had changed so that they hated all unicorns now. But not to see them at all? To look at them and see something else? What do they look like to one another, then? Trees, houses, real horses, their own children. 
If men no longer know what they're looking at, there may well be unicorns in the world yet. Unknown, I'm glad of it. But men had changed, and the world with them, because the unicorns were gone. So she went on along the hard road. And each day, she wished a little more that she had never left her forest. Yes, but now... I am a roving gambler. How do you do? Butterfly, what are you doing out on such a windy day? You'll take cold and die long before your time. Death takes what man would keep and leaves what man would lose. Blow a wind and crack your cheeks. I warm my hands before the fire of life and get four-way relief. Do you know what I am, butterfly? Excellent. Well, you're a fishmonger. You're my everything. You are my sunshine. You are old and gray and full of sleep. You are my pickle-faced consumptive Mary Jane. Your name is a golden bell hung in my heart. I would break my body to pieces to call you once by your name. Say my name, then. If you know my name, tell it to me. Rumpelstiltskin, gotcha. <laughs> it serves me right. Expecting a butterfly to know your name? All they know are scraps of songs and poetry and anything else they hear. Won't you come home, Bill Bailey? Won't you come home? Buckle down, why knock? Go and catch a falling star. Clay lies still, but bloods are over. Well... They mean well, but they can't keep things straight. And why should they? They die so soon. Unicorn. Old French, un unicorn. Latin, unicornis. Literally, one horned, unus one, and cornu a horn. A fabulous animal resembling a horse with one horn. Oh, I am a cook and a captain bold and the mate of the Nancy Brig. Has anybody here seen Kelly? Oh, you do know me. Butterfly, if you really know who I am, tell me you have, if you have ever seen anyone like me. Tell me which way I must go to find them. Where have they gone? Butterfly, butterfly, where shall I hide? The sweet and bitter fool will presently appear. Christ, that my love were in my arms, and I in my bed again. Please, all I want to know is that there are other unicorns somewhere in the world. Over the mountains of the moon, down the valley of the shadow, ride, boldly ride. No, no, listen. Don't listen to me, listen. You can find your people if you are brave. They passed down all the roads long ago, and the red bull ran close behind them and covered their footprints. Let nothing you dismay, but don't be half safe. The red bull? What is the red bull? Follow me down, follow me down, follow me down. His firstling bull has majesty, and his horns are the horns of a wild ox. With them he shall push the peoples, all of them, to the ends of the earth. Listen, listen, listen quickly. I am listening. Where are my people, and what is the red bull? I have nightmares about crawling around on the ground. The little dogs, Trey, Blanche, Sue, they bark at me. The little snakes, they hiss at me. It's you or me, Moth. Hand to hand to hand to hand. The Red Bull. What could have been meant by that? Another song, I suppose. At least he did recognize me. No, that means nothing at all. Except that somebody once made up a song about unicorns. Unicorns are the wariest of all wild things. 
So if she had not gone to sleep, dreaming of home, she would have roused at the sound of footsteps, muffled in rags. Quickly now, quickly. That was the end of chapter one. Chapter two. The banner there says, Mommy Fortuna's Midnight Carnival. And here I thought I'd seen the last of them. If he knew, but I don't think I'll tell them. What did you see, Rook? Dead horse. No, not dead. Give it to the harpy or the manticore. You're a fool. And what about you, juggler? Me? A, a horse. A white mare. A white mare. This here is the manticore. Man's head. Lion's body. Tail of a scorpion. Captured at midnight, eating werewolves to sweeten its breath. Here's the dragon. Breathes fire now and then. Speaks seventeen languages badly, and is subject to gout. Creatures of night, brought to light. The unicorn hardly heard him. Her body shrank from the touch of the iron bars all around her. The bars of her cage never stopped whispering evilly to one another and clawed, pattering voices. Tell me what you see. Look at your fellow legends and tell me what you see. Who are you? My name is Schmendrick the Magician. You won't have heard of me, but what do you see? Gatekeeper of the underworld. Three heads and a healthy coat of vipers, as you can see. It's only a dog. It's a hungry, unhappy dog with no coat. Are they blind? Look again. Last seen above ground in the time of Hercules, who dragged him up under one arm. But we lured him to light again with promises of a better life. Cerberus. Look at those six treated red eyes. You may look into them again one day. The dragon is a crocodile. The manticore is an ordinary lion. The satyr is an old ape with a twisted foot. The time draws near, Ragnarok. On that day when the gods fall, the serpent of the Midgard will spit a storm of venom at great Thor himself till he tumbles over like a poisoned fly. And the Midgard serpent is a boa constrictor. Spells of seeming, not making. I knew the old horror wouldn't dazzle you with her two penny spells. She can't turn cream into butter, but she can give a lion the semblance of a manticore to eyes that want to see a manticore there. Eyes that would take a real manticore for a lion, a dragon for a crocodile, and a unicorn for a white mare. I know you. Who are you? I, I do a sleight of hand for the crowds. I've had worse jobs, and I'll have better. Arachne of Lydia. Guaranteed the greatest weaver in the world. Her fate's the proof of it. She had the bad luck to defend, to defeat the goddess Athena in a weaving contest. Athena was a sore loser, and Arachne is now a spider, creating only for Mama, Mommy Fortuna's midnight carnival by a special arrangement. 
but really just a simple spider's web, almost colorless and does not, in fact, hold the world together. Yet she's not like the others. But no credit to Mommy Fortuna. The spider believes. She sees the galaxy she weaves, and she thinks she's done them. This one is real. This is the harpy, Seleno. Sister of the rainbow, believe it or not. Her name means the dark one, the one whose wings blacken the sky before a storm. The old woman caught her by chance, asleep, as she took you, but she should never have done it. Mommy Fortuna's craft is just sure enough to hold the harpy, but her mere presence is wearing all Mama Fortuna's spells so thin, and the truth melts her magic. You'll need to be free when she frees herself. She mustn't catch you caged. I dare not touch the iron. My horn could open the lock, but I cannot reach it. I cannot get out. Fear nothing for all my air of mystery. I have a feeling heart. Oops. Don't be afraid. Smendrick's with you. Do nothing till you hear from me. The unicorn. She heard a heart's bounce and breath going backward. She thought of the hunter's great-grandmother. She wondered what it must be like to grow old and to cry. Most shows would end here, for what could they possibly present after a genuine unicorn? But Mommy Fortuna's Midnight Carnival holds one more mystery yet. Behold her! Behold the last, the very end. Behold Ellie. What is plucked will grow old again. What is slain lives on. What is stolen will remain. What is gone is gone. No hero can stand before her. No god can wrestle her down. No magic can keep her out or in, for she's no prisoner of ours. Even while we exhibit her here, she is walking among you, touching and taking, for Ellie is old age. Don't leave, sir. Don't you want to hear about the satyr? What is sea-born dies on land, soft is trod upon. What is given burns the hand, what is gone is gone. I enjoyed that. I always do. I guess I'm just stage struck at heart. You better check on that damn harpy. I could feel her working loose this time. Get rid of her before she scattered us scatters us across the sky like bloody clouds. She thinks about it all the time. I can feel her thinking about it. Fool be still. I can turn her into wind if she escapes, or into snow, or into seven notes of music, but I choose to keep her. No other witch in the world holds a harpy captive, and none ever will. I would keep her if I could do it only by feeding her a piece of your liver every day. Oh, that's nice. What if she only wanted your liver? Feed her yours anyway. Harpies aren't bright. Not yet. Not yet. You're mine. If you kill me, you're mine. Not yet. Not yet. Whatever your friend the magician may say, I must have some small art after all. Do not boast, old woman. Your death sits in that cage and hears you. Yes, but at least I know where it is. You were out on the road hunting for your own death. And I know where that one is, too. The Red Bull? Where can I find the Red Bull? The 
Red Bull of King Haggard. Well, he'll not have you. You belong to me. You know better. Free the harpy while there is time, and set me free as well. Keep your shadows. I'd quit show business first. Do you think that was my dream when I was young and evil? You'd do much better to stay with me and be false. For in this whole world, only the Red Bull will know you when he sees you. I couldn't get away sooner. She set Rook to watch, watching me, and he hardly ever sleeps. But I asked him a riddle, and it always takes him all night to solve riddles. I knew you for a unicorn when I first saw you. I know that I am your friend. But you take me for a clown, or a clod, or a betrayer, and so must I be if you see me so. I think you are my friend. Will you help me? If not you, no one. You are my last chance. For I am Schmendrick the Magician, the last of the Red Hot Swamis, and I am older than I look. He spoke three angled words, and the cage disappeared. Her heart turned light as smoke, and she gathered up the strength of her body for a great bound into the sweet night. But she let the leap drift out of her, untaken. The bars are still there. I'm sorry. I would have liked it to be the spell that freed you. This is a super spell. Lo, the bars are now as brittle as old cheese, which I crumble and... Yow! Well then, this. A scratching of flinty phrases this time. Something gray and grinning. Something like a bear, but bigger than a bear. Something that chuckled muddily, came limping from somewhere eager to crack the cage like a nut and to pick out bits of the unicorn's flesh with its claws, something that would not be ordered back into the night. Then the harpy stirred. The gray shape turned what must have been its head and saw her, and made a foggy sound of terror as it vanished. I called him up one other time, long ago. I couldn't handle him then, either. I'll try once more. Shall I try once more? Try. No! It's shrinking! They're talking about touching me! That shouldn't have worked, whatever I just did. I dare no more. The witch made no mistake in me. Try again. You are my friend. Try again. I knew it would come to this. I dreamed it differently, but I knew. You deserve a great wizard, and you get a second-rate pit pickpocket. Ho, ho. Some magician. Some magician. Ah, turn blue, mommy. All right, Schmendrick, I give up. Why is Raven like a writing desk? You! Run, my lady. Why, you thin thief! You'll be strung by your guts to make a necklace for the harpy. A barbed wire necklace. My lady, you must go. I never liked you. She heard nothing as she walked to the cages. Walking the black earth and hearing the trees and the grass, she went to each cage. The lion ran, the crocodile, dog, ape, and ape fled. Only Arachne refused to leave her universe. Weaver, freedom is better, the unicorn told it, but only twice. 
Then the wind began. No, she can't. She will kill you. Run, you fool. While she's still a prisoner, she will kill you if you set her free. I will kill you if you set me free. Set me free. Oh, you are like me. Now? Now. Not alone. You never could have freed yourself alone. I held you. My lady, we have to get out of here. Run, please. No, you must walk slowly and pretend to be thinking of something else. Never run from anything immortal, magician. It attracts their attention. So they journeyed through the night together. Beyond the unicorn's light lay the shadows of the thick, happy sounds the harpy made as she destroyed. But beyond that, another sound followed them into morning on a strange road. The tiny, dry sound of a spider weeping. So, what is the Red Bull of King Haggard? Where does King Haggard live? I can tell you a poem. Where all the hills are lean as knives, and nothing grows, not leaves nor lives. Where hearts are sour as boiled beer, Haggard is the ruler here. I will know when I get there, then. Do you know any songs about the Red Bull? None. I know only what I have heard. That Haggard is an old man, stingy as late November, who rules over a barren country by the sea. Some say that the land was green and soft once, before Haggard came. But he touched it, and it withered. There is a saying among farmers, when they look on a field lost to fire, or locusts, or the wind, as blighted as Haggard's heart. They say, also, that there are no lights in his castle, and no fires, and that he sends his men out to steal chickens and bedsheets and pies from window sills. The story has it that the last time Haggard laughed, magician, oh, sorry, the Red Bull. I know less than I have heard, for I have heard too many tales, and each argues within one another. The Bull is real, the Bull is a ghost, the Bull is Haggard himself when the sun goes down. The Bull was in the land before Haggard, or it came with him, or it came to him. It protects from him from raids and revolutions, and saves him the expense of arming his men. It keeps him a prisoner in his own castle. It is the devil to whom Haggard has sold his soul. It is the thing he sold his soul to possess. The bull belongs to Haggard. Haggard belongs to the bull. I see. Yes, sorry, again. Magician. I owe you a boon, for you set me free. What would you have of me before I leave you? Take me with you. It's the end of chapter two. Chapter three. Remember the tale of the great wizard, Nikos. 
Once in the wood, he beheld a unicorn sleeping with his head in the lap of a giggling virgin, while three hunters advanced to slay him for his horn. Nikos had only a moment to act. Suddenly, the astonished hunter was faced, were faced with a young man bearing a sword of a twisted, tapering design. He killed them all and trampled the bodies when the men were dead. And did he kill the girl, too? No, he married her. It turns out that she was an aimless child who was angry at her family. A good man was what she needed. So, you see, wizards are helpful things to have around. The unicorn stayed a man? Well, he had to. He died old and respected, of a surfeit of violets, some say. He never could get enough violets. There were no children. The wizard trapped him in a burning building. Death by the Red Bull could scarcely have been worse. Um. Still, where you're going now, few will mean you anything but evil. And even a foolish heart may be welcome one day. Well, you may end up wishing you had asked for anything else than to accompany me. Well, this is a prosperous, pretty little town. I'll bet even the mice waddle. Hello, my name is Schmendrick, and I'm a wandering wizard. If I can pasture my white mare here and stay the night, I will sing for my supper, bother you just a little bit. Trouble your sleep ever so slightly, and pass on. A wandering wizard. Well, you must join us for dinner. You will sit with the councilman and the mayor, since the mayor is me. That's quite a beautiful mare. Schmendrick, was it? She is a rarer creature than you know. During the meal... Schmendrick told stories of his life as an errant enchanter, filling it with kings and dragons and noble ladies. He made my dolly talk. He was not lying, merely organizing events more sensibly, and so his tales had a taste of truth, even to the canny councilman. And then... My lord wizard, your hands are scarred. Souvenir of a harpy. They bite. Ooh. My word, look at the pasture. All the animals are clustered around your mare. Remarkable. Yes, isn't she? The interesting thing is that they don't seem to be afraid of her. It's as though they were doing her some sort of reverence. Yes, quite remarkable. If I were to tell you some of the offers I've had for her... What's that? Bells? Hoofbeats? Here now. Not so fast. And there's no running away. Not when Jack Jingley comes to town. Hey, my hat. Jack Jingley, if you please. Mayor. Here you go, then. And I went for a ride. So you did. The monthly fee as per. Jingly, that purse is half last month's size, and that one was small. Sorry. Can't be helped if hapless travelers through the green wood have scarce more gold than we. It's hard times is what it is. Nevertheless, Jack, you tell that captain of yours. Excuse me. Eh? My hat, if you
you don't mind? Eh? One of your men took my hat, and it would be wise for him to return it. And who is it here, pray, that knows what wisdom is? I am Schmendrick, the magician, and I make a bad enemy. I am older than I look, and less amiable. My hat. The magician now, then. Do some a tricksy, magician. Turn my nose green. Fill my saddlebags with snow. Disappear my beard. Or better yet, show me your heels. Very well, then. Upon your head be it. Wait, no. So the hat is here, and it flies across the table, and it scoops up a bunch of water in, from the trough, and slaps it on the mayor's face. He goes, oh, Oops, sorry. You had best come with us, magician. I misdoubt you'll be asked for encores. Mayor, he was technically our guest. Isn't that improper? Technically, aye. But a true wizard would not need our help at all, while an imposter would not deserve it. Now the care of that white mare of his has a different... Oh. He jumps over the fence. Just as well. Come, it's the children's bedtime. Halt, and give the password. Damn, here we go. A short life and a merry one here in the sweet green wood. Jolly comrades united to victory plighted. Liberty, to liberty plighted. The L sound makes all the difference. Thank ye. To liberty plighted. Comrades united. Nah, nah, I said that. A short life and a merry one. Jolly com comrades. No, that's not it. To liberty plighted. Give me a little help, will you? All for one and all for all. Can you get the rest yourself? All for one and all and one for all. I have it. All for one and all one for all. United we stand, divided we fall. There. There now. I just gave the password. He got an arrow, shot at him. We changed the password, Jack. Too hard to remember. <laughs> well, Jack, who is it you bring us? Comrade or captive? Add some more water to the soup, love. There's company. I don't know what he is myself, Captain. There was a mayor and a hat. I'll not have it, Cully. The soup's no thicker than sweat as it is. And who is he? He's no townsman. I don't like the look of it. Slit his wizard. He, it might have been a word that started out as Weezand and ended up on Gizzard, but she did not seem to be one for giving out clarifications. Instead... I am Schmendrick, the magician, and I must ask whether I am in the presence of Captain Cully of the Greenwood, boldest of the bold and freest of the free. That I am. He who hunts me for my head shall find a fearful foe, but he who seeks me as a friend may find me friend in O. I knew it. Got him, Cully. From gills to guilt, before he does you, the way the last one did. Ah, uh, don't mind my Molly Gru. That's just her way. She guards me better than I do myself, knowing as she does my generosity to all fugitives from tyranny. She has a good heart. So 
So, you are welcome here, Sir Sorcerer. Sir Sorcerer. Come to the fire and tell us your tale. How do they speak of me in your country? What have you heard of dashing Captain Cully and his band of freemen? Have a taco. Er, no thanks. I have heard, um, have heard that you are the friend of the helpless and the enemy of the mighty. And that you and your merry men lead a joyous life in the forest, stealing from the rich and giving to the poor. And I have heard the great tale of how you and Jack Jingly met and became blood brothers. And of course I have heard of that wicked king. Haggard. Rot and ruin him. Aye, there's not one here but's been done wrong by old King Haggard, driven from his rightful land, robbed of his rank and rents, skinned out of his patrimony. Revenge. Mark you, magician. One day Haggard will pay such a reckoning. He may pay, but not to the likes of you, Cully. His castle rots and teeter totters, and his men are too old to wear armor. But he'll rule forever for all Captain Cully dares. Ah, you wrong me, Molly. Were it not for the Red Bull. The Red Bull? You know what I think. I think the bull's not but the pet name you give your cowardice. You see? You might as well have been married, the way she's gone to seed. Um, they, um, sing a ballad of you in my country. I forget just how it goes. Really? Which one? Willie Gentle knows all thirty-one. Willie. Which one shall I play, Captain? None of them. Play us a true song for a change. Aye, play one about Robin Hood. Pay them no heed, sir. None of the thirty-one are in the child collection just at present, but Mr. Child may come one day, incognito, and rectify that. I am not Mr. Child, but... If I may offer an alternative, why not let your guest earn his night's lodging by amusing you? But the bitterness would not be quenched, now that it had flared up. They might slice each other, as well as him, in hatred over lives of tricks. And something flares in Schmendrick as he realizes they are right. Very well, then. Magic, do as you will. Do as you will. Do as you will. Robin Hood, and Little John, and Friar Tuck. Dale. it's Dale. Look at those changes. Marion. Wait for us. Robin, Tuck. I'm coming, I'm coming. Robin Hood is a myth. You know what I think? I think a stranger who weasels his way in with fancy words only to break up the band is really Haggard's son, Lear, in disguise. No, really, I'm not. I don't know how that happened. Robin Hood's a classic example of the heroic folk figures synthesized out of need, Mr. Child. John Henry is another. Men have to have heroes, but no man can ever be as big as the need. And so a legend grows around a grain of truth, like a pearl. Not that it isn't a remarkable trick, of course. He's not a child, Cully, nor is he any journeyman wizard, neither. He plays the gormless innocent, but he's the devil for deception. The way he gave out to be this child cove 
just to get you off your guard. Please, I never... I wasn't off my guard, Jack. Not for a moment. I may have seemed to be, but I'm very deceptive myself. But whoever he is, he knows very well that Robin Hood is the fable, and I am the reality. No ballads will accumulate around my name unless I write them myself. No children will read of my adventures in their school books and play at being me after school. I mean, you can't leave epic events to the people. They get everything wrong. His heart had filled and tautened like a sail, and something had moved more surely in his body than he ever had. Now all that was left of it had made the tree he was bound to fall in love with him. Always, always, faithfulness beyond any man's deserving. I will keep the color of your eyes when no other in the world remembers your name. There is no immortality but a tree's love. Sorry, I'm engaged to a larch. Magician, wake up and let me free you. Did you see what I did last night? I was watching. It was true magic. I had it. It had me, but I couldn't hold it. All right, you. You're made Marion's back, and I... No. Where have you been? Damn you. Where have you been? I am here now. And what good is it to me that you are here now? Where were you 20 years ago? 10 years ago? How dare you? How dare you? How dare you come to me now, when I am this? Look, we must go. She is the last. She is the last unicorn in the world. She would be. It would be the last unicorn in the world that came to Molly Grew. But it's all right. I forgive you. She didn't come for you. Unicorns are not to be forgiven, and we are on a quest. I had some things I wanted to take, but they don't matter now. I'm ready. I forbid it. I, Schmendrick the Magician, be wary of wowsing a wizard's wrath. Rousing. We are journeying to King Haggard's country to find the Red Bull. Well, you're going the wrong way. We're on chapter four. I am a king's daughter, and if I cared to care, the moon that has no mistress would flutter in my hair. No one dares to cherish what I choose to crave. Never have I hungered that I did not have. I am a king's daughter, and I grow old within the prison of my person. The shackles of my skin, and I would run away and beg from door to door just to see your shadow once, and never more. Nothing. No unicorn. That's enough, I think. Let's go. Fine. Whatever you say. You might at least... What? Nothing.
You satisfied custom well enough, and no one expected more than that. Now we can be married. Yes, now we can be married. If there really were such things as unicorns, one would have come to me. I sang well, I have a golden bridle, and I'm pure and untouched. If there really were. Why did you not go to her, then? She would never have run away to see my shadow. If I had shown myself, she would have been more frightened than if she had seen a dragon. No one makes promises to a dragon. But does that matter? I mean, most of them would always, would have always been afraid, wouldn't they? I remember that once it never mattered to me whether or not princesses meant what they sang. I went to them all and laid my head in their laps, and a few of them rode on my back, though most were afraid. But I have no time for them now, princesses or kitchen maids. I have no time. Haggard's Fortress, we are here. Kind of rickety, if you ask me. The story goes that a witch built it for him, and he wouldn't pay her, so she swore that one day it would sink into the sea with Haggard when his, when his greed caused the sea to overflow. Haggard moved in right away. He said no tyrant's castle was complete without a curse. Where is the bull? Where does Haggard keep the Red Bull? I have heard that the bull roams at night and lies up by day in a great cavern beneath the castle. But that's not our problem now. The nearer danger lies there. Hag's Gate. It's the first town he took when he came over the sea, the one that has lain longest under his hand. It has a wicked name. Mommy Fortuna would never go there, and once she said that even Haggard was not safe while Hexgate stood. There is something there. I smell him, all around, the Red Bull. Schmendrick, are you sure this is Hexgate? It looks sort of... respectable. It's Hagsgate, Molly. It's the only approach to the castle. And yet there's no smell of sorcery, no air of black magic. It makes me wish I'd packed my good dress. And where is everybody? Indoors, counting their blessings? Save your breath, stranger, while you have it. Your name... Gick. Gick, an alien name. True enough. Then again, all names are alien in Hagsgate, so, Mr. Gick, if you and Mrs. Gick would kindly tell us what brings you skulking here. Mrs. Gick, I never even, I mean, I hardly know this woman. I am Schmendrick, Schmendrick the magician. And I will turn your weapon magician. into scorpion. The very thing. Come dine with us. And now we must explain why you were greeted so uncivilly. Pish, no need. Happens all the time. What I would like to know is why you have a reputation for ghouls and monsters that seems to be absurdly unjustified. It is not absurd, Mrs. Gick. Hagsgate lies under a curse. It is full fifty years since our sorrow fell, when King Haggard built his castle by the sea. When the witch built it, I think, 
credit where it's due, after all. You know that story. Then you must also know that Haggard refused to pay her. Oh, it looks like he's drinking a little bit. But that has nothing to do with Hagsgate. The town had done the witch no wrong. But she came to us and demanded that we force Haggard to pay her. We did nothing, and so we were cursed. Cursed with peace and prosperity and good wine? Very good wine. Terrible indeed. I, magician, most terrible. You, whom Haggard holds in thrall, share his feast and share his fall. You shall see your fortune flower till the torrent takes the tower. Yet none but one of Hagsgate town may bring the castle swirling down. As Haggard grew in might, we likewise prospered mightily. And so we knew that a child of Hagsgate would bring all we had to an end. But how can you keep one of your children from growing up and fulfilling the curse? By not having any. Twenty-one years ago, in the dead of winter, I came across a foundling in the town square. The cats of the town had covered the child, shielding it from the snow. And you took the child in and raised it as your own? I chased the cats away and went home alone. The next day, the child was gone. I have to admit, that's a first-class curse. Absolutely first-class. Hats off. So tell me, Mr. The name is Drin. How much do you want to remove it? Oh, well, we'd just as soon have the curse remain where it is. Well, your little cat baby grew up to be Prince Lear, without a doubt. The only way Haggard would have come by an heir. Without a doubt. And what you wish to hire a wizard for is to... Employ a discreet potion. Once you have settled yourself at the castle, that is your destination, we assume. Well, I hope he is that baby, and I hope he drowns your town. Molly, I hope the fish nibble you like corn cobs. I hope... And the price you offer for this is what? A good dinner and a few bumpers of wine for a poisoned prince? I never haggle with a professional. Twenty-five pieces of gold. I wouldn't do a chim- do- I wouldn't do in a chimney sweep for that. One hundred pieces of gold. Absurd. Obscene. Thirty-five pieces. Your whole way of life is worth thirty-five pieces of gold? Ninety. Seventy pieces of gold, suckers. Now, if they'd asked me to remove the curse, I'd have done so for a bottle of that wine, a glass. They deserve their fate. They deserve worse, to leave a child out in the snow. Well, if they hadn't, then he wouldn't have grown up to be the hero of all this. That's the way these things go. But if he's the hero, what is she? We are the tale, but she is real. She is real. How many men? Three men, coming swiftly. I tell you, we've lost them. We passed them a mile back where I heard them rustling. 
You're afraid of the magician, but you'd do better to be afraid of the Red Bull. I'm not afraid, but we're wasting our time. We've been at this all night. It's getting to be dawn. Dawn's two hours away, fool. Let me try this. Warmer than summer, more filling than food. Sweeter than woman and dearer than blood. Stronger than water and kinder than dove. Say the name of the one you love. Dren! Dren, 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 Dren. That's coming from the bag of gold. Dren was the name of that dude. Dren, 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 Dren. There, you see? Dren treats his money so well that it cannot bear to be parted from him. <laughs> Most touching relationship you ever saw. I told you, dawn already. Castle's west of us, idiot. And with an old, gray, terrible cry of ruin, she came. Rearing out of her hiding place, her hooves came slashing down, her mane ragged on her forehead. She wore a plume of lightning. They cowered before her, all of them. But the unicorn saw none of them. Mad, dancing, See white, she belled her challenge again. Drin's men dropped their blades and ran, and then? And then the brightness answered her with a bellow like the sound of ice breaking up in the spring. I wish I could read that voice. I don't think I can do that one. The castle's on fire. He is here. He is here. The Red Bull. The color of blood. The blood that stirs under an old wound that never really healed. Light from him like sweat, his horns pale as scars. Like a wave about to break on the shore. And the light of her horn went out as she ran. No! The trees lunged at her, and she veered wildly among them. She who slipped so softly through eternity without bumping into anything. His roar. And now on the hard, bald land, she had room to race. She moves with the speed of life. Swifter than anything, burdened with legs or wings. They passed down all the roads long ago, and the red bull ran close behind them. He killed them all. He's driving her. If he wanted to kill her, he could have done it by now. He's driving her the way he drove the others. Do something. To the castle, to Haggard. I wonder why. Please, it's not fair. He'll drive her to Haggard and no one will ever see her again. Please, you're a magician. You won't let him. There's nothing I can do. My master Nikos did it. 
He transformed a unicorn into something else. If she were no longer a unicorn, the red bull would lose interest. But that requires a real magician. Do something. But that's not exactly true. Not a real magician, but real magic. And Robin Hood is a myth. All right, trapped in a burning building, here goes. The words leave him like eagles and he lets them go. The emptiness rushes back on him with a thunderclap. What did you do? The bull stopped. Talking oranges, burning building, I have no idea. What have you done, Tremendrick? What have you done? And that's the end of chapter four. The next one is chapter five. And I think actually, uh, I think I'm going to go leave it there for tonight. If you're watching, thank you for joining me. And I hope you have a good night.